They finally did it. Elgato released the Wave XLR, which is a USB audio interface. And I actually was surprised it took them that long because I thought before they gonna build microphones by themselves, they would release a microphone interface. So in this video, we are going to unbox, install and take a first look at the brand new Elgato Wave. XLR right after I talked about today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Restream and the Restream Live Studio. Learn more about the Restream and how Restream can help you as an online content creator to reach more people by clicking the link in the video description below. So let's unbox the Elgato Wave XLR and see what's in the box. By the way, the box, of course, as always, in the unique Elgato style. So, in the box, we have the Elgato Wave XLR itself, and I assume there are some cables in there because it, it, it reads get connected. So, let's take out the actual interface. So, this is it. This is the Elgato Wave XLR, an audio interface with, well, a big volume knob, but we get to that in just a sec. But on the back side, we find the XLR input, we have an audio output, and we have the USB connection, which powers this entire thing and connects to your computer. In addition, here on the back, we have a mute button, which is not a button, it's capacitive. And I was wondering why a capacitive touch button at the back for muting would be such a big deal. And we will get to that in just a moment. And over here, we not only have the big volume knob, no, we also have some indicator. Over here, we have the indicator for the input volume, the output volume, and the crossfade. We talk about them in just a moment, a little bit later. And on this side, we have the phantom power indicator. Yes, this little USB audio interface is capable of providing phantom power for your condenser microphones. So let's get back to the box and get into the connection box. Probably just providing us with some cables and paperwork, but hey, let's check it out anyway. So yeah, paperwork and a cable. This is a USB, this is a regular USB to USB-C cable. And we will use this to connect the Wave XLR to our computer. And I'm about to do this right now. So I just plugged it in. There was no notification in Windows. Uh, it seems to be just working. So let's check this. And indeed, there it is. There is the Elgato Wave XLR audio interface. I just connected to USB and it's already working, which is actually a bigger deal than you think. Then uh, I had some audio interfaces during my times here on YouTube and it usually is not as easy as that. I remember days in which I was searching for the right drivers just so that I could find a version of the driver of the audio interface. I'm not going to name a name here, which uh, costs some blue screen. So seeing that, seeing that this USB microphone is just plug and play and working is actually wonderful. However, before we will take a closer look at the functionality of the device itself, let's install the Elgato Wave Link software, which is a special audio mixing software, which is only available for the Elgato Wave products, which is also one of the big reasons why the Elgato Wave XLR is so great because now you're finally able to use the Elgato Wave Link software, which is very easy to use for streamers with your own microphone, something which was not possible before, before you had to have an Elgato Wave microphone. So let's install this and see what we can do. Elgato Wave XLR, download for Windows. So this is the Wave Link, this is what we need. All right, Wavelink software is installed. Hello and welcome. So let's get started. Select your monitor output. So that will probably be the headphones over the Elgato Wave XLR because on this audio interface, you can also connect your headphones so you can actually hear your system audio. There it is. Hello. That's great. That worked great. Uh, add your channels. Okay, so the deal about the Elgato Link software is it allows you to separate your audio sources in separate uh, channels, as they call it and uh, run those sources with different audio levels into your streaming software. So what we're doing here right now is we are now adding a new source, in my case, the system audio. And if you want to learn more about the Elgato Wavelink software, make sure to check out the video up there in the info card as I did a video in which I told you everything you need to know about the Elgato Wavelink and how to get started. So let's go back to the Elgato Wave XLR and its hardware. So in the middle, we have a big dial, which is obviously used uh, to control 
the volume and with this beautiful light indicator which I think is actually very beautiful and I talked about this earlier so here are different modes right now it's in input mode which means we are controlling the input gain of our microphone so this little audio interface rocks a 75 decibel amplifier which should be enough to even get the very quiet dynamic microphones which I have one this microphone is known for being super quiet and that's why I always had to use an external mini amplifier to get actually high enough levels out of these microphones to be able to stream with it with the new Elgato Wave XLR that should not be the case anymore and to find out how well it actually sounds with that microphone make sure to subscribe and not miss my upcoming live streams because we are from now on going to use this little audio interface for that microphone so let's go back to the device itself. So there is that and if we press the button in the middle once we switch over to the headphone mode and right now we are controlling the output volume. As I said before this interface not only has the XLR input no it also rocks an uh, headphone output which can be used to send the entire system audio mix over that output. So right now we are controlling the actual volume of what we hear on our headphones. If we press one more time we're now in crossfade mode and if we do a long press we enable the phantom power. So yes this audio interface is not only able to go with dynamic microphones it's also able to go with condenser microphones which require phantom power. So a pretty beefy beast actually for the size. Also on the back side there is this capacitive button and if I press on that or I just touch it the audio input is being muted and I was wondering why capacitive touch is such a big deal that it's in the marketing material and they could not just use a regular button and then I, I started to understand if you have a clicky button like this one it feels great but it has some sound to it. So if you had a button like that your people on a voice call or wherever you are would always hear when you mute and unmute yourself and you might know this from some friend who has like a, a techie headset with a mute button on it. It's exactly that. You know exactly when they go into mute and come back. So actually having a touch button which is quiet is quite nice. So by touching that we go into mute and by touching again we go out of mute again and that is pretty much the device itself for you. And with all of that set there's only one last thing for me left to do which is hook it up to my in-ear monitors and start streaming in order to find out how good the Elgato Wave XLR is in daily use. If you don't want to miss that make sure to subscribe to this channel because there will be a follow-up review of the Elgato Wave XLR as well as many 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 live streams in which we will test the Elgato Wave XLR live on stream. All right, I'm Greeny, this is Greenbox. In case this video helped you, make sure to let me know by liking this video and writing a comment. And while you're here and we are now on the end card, so why don't you click one of those two videos here and you probably already clicked and you're not hearing this and in case you do, hi, I'm Greeny and now bye!